this is an important kick then for Gwent. That's it. That's the, the crowd's first chance to open their lungs on Monmouthshire's behalf and their noise hits the heavens. Richie Pugh of Pontypool strikes Gwent's first points against the seventh All Blacks. So often this afternoon, uh, the Gwent halfbacks have had to kick in a hurry like that. Duncan Hales, New Zealand's left wing from Canterbury, Sid going in the foreground. I can't interpret that one to you, but um, a sin by New Zealand anyway. Dennis Hughes in possession, put to the ground by Ian Stevens. Mike Grindle trying to pick up for Gwent. In possession now, Graham Whiting, the big New Zealand prop, another of these 17 stoners. Back it comes from Stevens, who used to be a scrum half. They changed pace with going, but Grindle has going on the ground. We're about 10 yards outside Gwent's 25. The All Blacks. Win a penalty for offside. And possibly something more violent, the use of the boot at the ruck as well. This is going, he finds Kirkpatrick, his captain. It's out to Ian Stevens, who's going for the corner. He's in. Little Ian Stevens. Morris is already worth um, seven, or rather eight of New Zealand's points this afternoon. Here's the opportunity to convert Stevens' try. An arrow miss by Trevor Morris. That's New Zealand's lead over Gwent. And the scrum is on, the Gwent 25. And that's some thrust, isn't it? making it a horribly bad ball for Gwent to deal with, and Pugh's kick is a bad one, it goes to Hales, to Sayers, 5 5'8", Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Morris falls, very quickly up on him is Duggan, it's a nice slip to Geary, crossing New, Le New Zealand's 25, the ball went forward then, Grindle, the ball went forward from Faulkner, as play entered New Zealand's 25, so those three quarters frustrated for the time being. The pack's locked horns on New Zealand's 25, and there are only four minutes of the match left now. Sid going is penalised in front of his own posts, and 25 yards out. But um, one would expect Gwent to run it. Three points isn't enough. They need the possibility of six. Turner is the controlling man to Dennis Hughes. He's the pivot. Gareth Howells back to Hughes. Comes out to Parry. It's gone forward. That's the New Zealand front row, which has done the... Core work at the scrummage, the tight head prop on this side is Murdoch, Ehrlich is his hooker, and then Graham Whiting doing the, tight, the loose head job. Turner challenging going. Going on the left wing, and such a balanced player, low centre of gravity, difficult to put down. Dennis Hughes at the back and he was held down by Sutherland. Referee Patterson saw that too. So Gwent win a second penalty. Grindle. Duggan this is of Bedworth. Got support. Out it comes to Bendel. And Ehrlich has knocked on as he intercepted. So uh, <laughs> a moment of glory for New Zealand's hooker is a, a brief one. There's New Zealand's posts in the background. Turner feeds. This is an elusive runner. Can't step inside Stevens and Stewart, though. Now Stevens comes away. And there'd been a fingertip infringement back near their posts by the 
All Blacks. It looks now as if the lead of 13 points, which the All Blacks hold, is too much for Gwent to overhaul in the two minutes of this game which are remaining. However, Gwent winning a lot of ball in these final minutes. Grindle has Browning, but he runs into uh, Parkinson and also Hales. There's no future in that for Mike Grindle of Ebuvale. The line-out statistics have gone very much against Gwent in the game. So one imagines that the All Blacks should be able to clear their lines. Could be aimed for number five, Peter Whiting on the left. It's short on that, it was meant for Hayden. Alan Williams, the hooker it was, who came through the front for Gwent. But play has to stop. Big broad grin for Peter Whiting. A grin which symbolises the feelings the All Blacks must have. They were alarmed about this challenge, but up on the hill, the evidence of their superiority this afternoon. 16-3, they lead. Or oh, they did until a second ago. Turner was the scorer. The Ebervale inside half, Glyn Turner takes Gwent's try against New Zealand after a take against the head by Newbridge's hooker Alan Williams. And that's one in the eye for the All Blacks, as if to emphasise that uh, the game isn't quite quite over yet. This is Pugh. He'd like to turn Gwent's score from seven into nine with a conversion about as near as touch as one could get. Oh, it's climbing well, but it's wide. And that's it. No injury time allowed by Mr. Patterson. And so Gwent's challenge to the seventh All Blacks has failed, has failed gallantly. But Kirkpatrick's men have come here and they've been too good for Manmusha. That is the measure of their superiority. Just to uh, rehearse the scores which made up New Zealand 16. There was a try by Hayden converted by Morris which made it 6-0 at half time. Then a penalty by Trevor Morris, a drop goal by him. Then Monmusha replied with a penalty goal by Pugh. And Stevens took his try for New Zealand over at the left hand corner. 16-3 and now right on time we saw Gwent's final gesture to the seven ball backs. A neat little try by Glyn Turner. Big broad grin for Peter Whiting, a grin which symbolises the feelings the All Blacks must have. They were alarmed about this challenge, but up on the hill, the evidence of their superiority this afternoon. 16-3, they lead, or they did until a second ago. 